Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel where this is quite an unusual one. We're here in a fairly familiar workshop, the base of my friend Freddy Tavares, except today we're not only catching up with Freddy, but also with Matt Armstrong, who has only gone on board this, the crashed 911 GT3 992 that belonged to Adam LZ. Yes, this is all coming together in the craziest of ways. And today, Matt, as well as Freddie, are going to show us around what's happened to this, what they're doing with it, why it's here, and plenty more. Plus, I'm going to throw the keys to my GT Black series in Matt's direction to get his thoughts on driving a UK right-hand drive car here in the USA. And in fact, that very car drove on the road and around the corner where sadly, all of this actually happened. I referenced it at the time. Well, thankfully everyone was okay. The car not so, but I tell you what, it's gonna be back in one piece in not too long. Let's go find the guys and find out exactly what the story is with this GT3. Yo guys, Matt. Hi Tim. Dude, what's going on? Good to see you both. This is a bit strange. Yeah, I mean, you guys are uh, enjoying the Florida sunshine. <laughs> I'm part of the family now. I've moved in to <laughs> Freddy's unit and slowly taken over as you can see. <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, this is your first trip to the USA. Yeah. And you've only gone and bought a Porsche. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm settling in. It's, it's called settling in. You get a car, next thing probably a house. Yeah, we're, we're settling in. Dog next. Yes. Maybe yes. a dog. It's all happening very quickly. Yeah, well, I mean, that, that's happening very quickly. It, it seems it. So you sent me a little picture of this car <laughs> yeah. and I didn't quite clock what was going on at first. I probably- you didn't even open it. it didn't <laughs> well, it didn't come through properly. I didn't, I didn't get it. And then it was like, wait a second, yeah. <laughs> wait a second. I know exactly what this is. I know exactly what happened. I actually drove on the car that I'm gonna be making you drive a little bit later on, on the road where that happened. Oh, okay. I've driven around the corner where that happened extra carefully, of course, <laughs> knowing, yeah. knowing exactly what had gone down a month or so before. Yeah. But you guys have been pouring all over this. You kind of bought it out here. Freddie, you helped with lots of that. Yeah. So uh, the way it works is if you buy a car in this state, uh, it goes to a salvage auction and then you can't buy those cars without having some sort of like broker. So I have a uh, account with a brokerage and then we just bought it through that. And then uh, Matt sent over the money and then they sent over the car and then Matt got here and now we're rebuilding the car. And not only that, you were ordering parts and all sorts of stuff back home. Yeah, like, I mean, it's, it seems crazy now, like, speak, like thinking and talking about it because it's still so much money even though it's crashed. But Freddie was saying that we might find it difficult over here to get parts for it. So uh, Porsche are a little bit different. Um, they, they want everything by, done by approved body shops over here. So we're kind of like the... The people they don't like. So, <laughs> whereas in the UK, they they like me and it's fine. So they would sell me whatever, but it's the, just the issue of getting it from the UK to here. So we took a lot in the suitcase. So you just packed up some suitcases, <laughs> some hand luggage of random Porsche parts, yeah. and flew them across the world. We took rad packs and all sorts. Yeah. Trying to explain that to the airline was a, yeah. a different type of issue, but we, they got here, they got here. Did you go through the x-ray scanners at the airport and they're just like, what? So I had to explain when I was checking in the bags, and and they said have you got anything in there that obviously we should know about and I just said are there some car parts in there and then they kind of just stops <laughs> I said yeah go to the oversized luggage and speak to them and we had to explain to them and uh, yeah they, they thought I was absolutely mad but you are absolutely through. mad <laughs> you, <laughs> you, bought, you genuinely bought a car in a country across a massive ocean that you've never been to before. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's full send, full send or no send. I mean, we was going for this. It's taking a bit of a risk, isn't it? Oh, <laughs> yeah. It's, but it's one of them things I, I see in the car and it was going to be my only chance probably to ever own the 992 GT3 over in the UK. It's like allocations, that sort of stuff. It's crazy, and yeah. I've never, even, I've never bought a brand new car. I knew I'd never get the chance to own one. So when this popped up, and then the history that the car has as yeah, well. And, history. and then Freddie <laughs> literally, I met Freddie like a month before he got the car um, for me over here. And he said one thing to me in my workshop that just stuck in my head saying, if uh, you ever need to buy a car and rebuild it in my workshop, 
then let me know because it'd be cool. And I don't know whether he said it's a joke. I was going to say, were you being serious? Hey, yeah, yeah, man. Uh, Yeah, my schedule's not too good, so I don't don't know. (laughs) And that stuck in my mind. I was like, well, Freddie's sure to help me out. And well, and so he did. So, and here we are. And here we are with this car. So, having a look around this, it's not. It's just front end stuff, right? (laughs) (laughs) Okay, those are the faces, right? (laughs) Yeah. It's, it's, it's um, quite a bit. Yeah. Where, yeah. where do you begin? What okay. happened? Well, firstly, I know roughly what happened. Obviously, it was going around a left-hand corner. There was an oncoming vehicle that kind yeah. of turned across it, and it caught the front right of the car. Yeah, so front right of the car um, has taken a hit. Luckily, we got away with the carbon fiber like reinforced bonnet, which was like, meant to be ridiculous. I mean, we're money. looking at all of this, and we're like, this bit's okay. okay. This yeah. bit's good. <laughs> well, it has a little, a little, little thing right here. You ah, see? some paint. Yeah, you know. That's, yeah. I mean, that's a write-off right there. Back <laughs> in the day. <laughs> yeah. So, it's nice, though. Full are. carbon. All exposed carbon. And I mean, if you so. had needed a new one of these, this would have added ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 to the price. Yeah, I wouldn't have been very happy about that. Um, but we have found a few things on it which... It's a little bit worse than we originally thought, but it was hard to tell with the wheel on, with it being like the centre lock um, yeah, yeah. wheels, we didn't have the centre lock tool to get it off, so Freddie had to message, some, message someone to go and get uh, one of those tools, we eventually got it off, and then we found a lot of damage to the point where there's actually damage to the front tub, um, I don't know if you're able to see, you can, you can just about see it here, the bolt is ripped out of the front tub oh, there, yeah, yeah. and then that is classed as structural and okay. anything structural Porsche is not gonna sell us to it so that's still I'm trying to figure that out which we've got our minds together trying to figure how we're gonna how to get, get a whole new that. kind of front that's it yes yeah, this whole thing is gonna have to be replaced it's all aluminium it's bonded on it's reused rivets to go on as well so yeah it's pretty intense and if I'm looking at it I didn't expect something like that I thought ah it's suspension it's gonna be a wing not a fender. Yes. <laughs> Ready? Uh, uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, the bonnet. The bonnet. All good bonnet. Well. It's a it's a hood here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you have to agree to disagree. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, so there's a few things, and then of course the yeah. What do you, do you call these rockers? So uh, it's either rockers or side skirts. Side um, skirts is. I used to uh, call I them can, side skirts, yeah. and then uh, Jack, my uh, body guy. He calls them rockers. So I guess that's the, you know, appropriate terminology for like repairing these things. I guess so. So uh, there's probably a distinction. Somebody in the comments is like, there's actually a really big distinction. Like it doesn't They both work. Yeah, they both work. Side skirt rockers. Yeah, there we go. Get it all in one. Side skirt rocker is actually damaged as well. And this is a whole panel. The whole thing. Yeah. So we're hoping we're not having to replace the whole thing. We we should be able to repair that, Jack. Um, yeah. And Freddie over here, like, used to that kind of <laughs> involvement and repair. <laughs> that, should be, so, that should be no problem. Yeah, so that's a Donald compared to the projects you're facing. It's not. A, <laughs> you should have seen this car, dude. Like that car was like, like a bent paperclip. Like it was, it was. It's really bad. That's it. And it, it's nice to be able to so kind of be surrounded by these these guys because yeah. if, if I'm on my own, then I'm thinking, oh my god, how am I going to solve this? But when you've got like Freddie and Jack around they're so confident about it and positive yeah. it's like okay everything's going to be fine we're okay yeah. it's not like i'm m- bloody thousands of miles away from home and <laughs> i'm using somebody else's tools and yeah it's all unfamiliar yeah that's it and, and if you're keeping on building in towards the spring and the summer you're going to be facing the humidity it's going to be a very different game oh i haven't thought about that yet yeah, yeah. <laughs> Plus, uh, you know i'm going to invoice you for all the hours you're here yeah yeah you know that's uh, that's going to be that's going to end up being good luck matt <laughs> <laughs> storage so, fees storage, storage fees for oh, every day that's here fees, yeah. so things like this the wing yeah. and the headlight those are not necessarily cheap but they're replaceable you can find the parts yeah so some of those parts from the UK, some from out here. Some things not so helpful, uh, I believe. Yeah, so the carbon disc, uh, <laughs> this was strategically placed, I believe. Um, the disc was actually hidden like that from the caliper and I was- uh, So in all the photos, it, it looks perfect. On the photos, I was like, great, the mm-hmm. carbon disc is fine. But as yeah. soon as we got the wheel off, I was like, hmm, let's have a look. Whoops. Oh, oh dear. Yeah, that's a chunk. Yeah. Um, Porsche in, the US wants seven thousand dollars for a front single brake disc. disc. Yeah, yeah. five thousand pounds. Wow. UK, so one brake disc. Uh, but the good thing about carbon ceramics when you replace them, they usually last quite long. Uh, 
this one didn't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't hear anything. You know? Yeah. You don't hear anything. So, yeah, again, it's all swings and roundabouts. Yeah. We're going to have to get our head around to try and uh, find the best way and the most cost effective way to uh, repair it because there's a reason why um, the insurance didn't fix it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So. Yeah, there's a reason it. why they left it. Yes, yeah. they, they it. didn't want to do this. Yeah. 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 We're kind of like the vultures that pick up the mess. So. <laughs> <laughs> What's interesting about this is that um, just because you have that one mount ripped off, uh, this entire thing is going to have to get gutted. Like yeah. everything basically past here is going to have to be replaced. Um, yeah. And that's because that's the correct way to do it from... Porsche, you know? Yeah. You could just probably, you know, like booger weld that thing back on and then, you know, do it for YouTube and <laughs> you know, good. But like if you want to actually have some confidence in going around corner at a you know It's a GT3. Speed, it's, it's a GT3. Not, yeah, it's not a, a Nissan Micro uh, I'm repairing anymore. It's a it's Hey, there a are some people who push on in Nissan Micros. <laughs> that's, that's, that's true, that's true. I've been to the UK, I've seen this stuff. <laughs> That's true. But yeah, we found we've already found that there's a fair few headaches with this car. I mean, you only have to come and look inside. Yeah, it does open. Yeah, yeah so you've you kind of an extent completely gutted this. I didn't need to take all of that out because the airbags blow. I had to take all of that out because of the pyro fuse, the small little fuse that cuts off when the airbags blow which is a box right at the front there. Right, <laughs> right at yeah. the very front. Um, so you had to strip the whole console, the whole dash, the whole everything. Everything had to come out. That's what it looks like. You can there it is, yeah, there we go. That might be the Audi one, but it look, looks the same. <laughs> Tiny fuse like that, when your airbags blow, the fuse blows, um, and that prevents you from starting the car back up. So this essentially cuts power going directly to the starter motor and um, so you can no longer start the car stops any fires any damage caused the engine if you've knocked an oil cooler or radiator off or anything like mm -hmm. that um, once you replace the airbags you replace these and then it this the circuit is continued Good and to go. with not all the other crash damage cars that we've done just to get them started we've just bypassed it so the wire that would uh, the power is going to this side we'd just normally take the starter motor and uh, wire and pull it over to that side and it would start. This one, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, uh, nope. no, the Germans did not make it so easy. No, it is so far under there that we've had to remove everything and Freddie came up with this amazing idea that to start the car, uh, because we really wanted to see whether it started, <laughs> this was so because funny. <laughs> we didn't have a starter motor, the only other way to do it was to bump start the car by pushing it. And it's only possible in a manual car. You wouldn't be able to do this in a PDK. Of we haven't course. actually mentioned that yet. When this is all said and done, you've got a six-speed manual. Yes. Not an N2 GT3. Yes. In PTS Ultraviolet. Yeah. Yeah, like... This is going to be that epic. Is crazy anyway. <laughs> that is crazy Congratulations, anyway. man. Yeah, I can't wait to drive it. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I've never, I've never driven one, so never the, sat in one before, so yeah. It, so the first time you're driving it is the bump start along here that left some tire marks over there. Yeah, on oh, caster uh, wheels on the front because we've got no steering. Um, yeah, it was Freddie's idea. It was going to be... It was either going to go really right or really wrong. And well, if it went really wrong, there'd just be some more videos of broken cars yeah. and a broken yeah. warehouse. Yeah, that's I fine. can't believe it worked. What's the worst that could have happened? I mean, you just slammed I mean, into the wall or something. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I can't believe it worked, but it worked and it started, which was good news. So we started things on a high when we got here and then uh, it slowly went downhill. Yeah. <laughs> it's all downhill from here, yeah. Everything around the back of the car is all good, right? Uh, ish. Uh, ish. Diffuser's off. So or this is tray, the rear say. diffuser. Looks a little bit. It's a yeah. little bendy bendy. So this we found when we got the car, this was missing. And we've recently found it, but it was right at the front it was on the front bumper. So I thought this was an under tray. Okay. And when we took the front bumper off, this fell off. And you can see that this was uh. The rear diffuser, here's the hole for the exhaust. It's been scraped along the back here. And what mm -hmm. we think has happened is maybe in like transport when the yeah. cars came off and it's come yeah. up at such an angle, yeah. it's dragged it from the back all the way to the front. And it's actually even like squashed a bit of the exhaust yeah. tips and scraped them. And you've so got like these ducting things that are yeah. completely yeah. squished. I've actually, I did manage to find one of these off someone who was breaking one, which has the same damage as mine. So we couldn't get any, the, any oh no! Yeah, we couldn't get any of the other. You parts. need a car that's been hit at the rear. Yeah, 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 that's it. But this car has had the same damage, so we couldn't get any of the other parts. But I managed to get the diffuser. But this was 
a thousand dollars so not cheap yeah parts and for this it, parts for this are not going to be cheap yeah it could have been avoided if it was like maybe someone was a little bit more careful but i guess when these cars are going well you haven't place. been to the road have you ever driven tether the dragon yes so middle of nowhere very tight twisty road mm -hmm. pretty hard place to have a loader to pick up a car like oh, this really? yes. like it's oh, not a place that trucks can get to very easily yeah so they will have been full focused on just getting it off the road as quickly as possible yes. i don't know how much of a good idea it would be to when this car's done to take it to tail of the dragon and, and, and drive it. it 10 out of 10 do it 10 out of 10 yeah more than 10 out of 10 okay yeah. no it's, it's fantastic it's the it's road a brilliant is fine road. like it is a brilliant road yeah. and in a manual gt3 it's an even more brilliant road yeah oh like i perfect. do want to do it yeah it's it's like tempting <laughs> fate again Dude, if now you're, you're 40 good. miles an hour on this road you are cooking like, yeah, really? it's, it's so tight oh, okay, and twisty. Yeah. You don't have to be bombing it down. And then there's all your interior and your seats, the nice yeah. carbon buckets. They we learnt yesterday from Porsche that they are thirty thousand dollars a seat. <laughs> a, what? <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're right over there, Freddie. Right. What? <laughs> yeah. How much? A seat. He says, "Have your airbags blown in the seat because." Uh, uh, maybe there's like an airbag. I didn't know there was airbag in the seat or well, anything like that. Thank goodness they haven't. Because these carbon bucket seats each is thirty thousand dollars, and I was like, "Oh my!" You should have seen me taking that out. I was just, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Yeah, Whoa. it's okay." But that's like five times my GT Black Series carbon seat. And I'm sure as well. It's paint a sample. When you, paint a sample. Yeah. <laughs> it's all paint a sample. When you add them from uh, when you spec the car, yeah, they're not as they're not as much as thirty thousand dollars a seat I, th I think it was like a is so much extra i think it was like, like 12 or something like that over the like regular soft comfort seats yeah yeah, yeah. it's not it, i think sam uh seen through glasses had like the comfort seats yes. in his yeah. in his one um but yeah they're not thirty thousand dollars to spec them <laughs> but it's thirty thousand dollars a seat if you need to if replace them. them yeah goodness so, me yeah and I'll that's crazy money unbolted them out of the car and Throwing them down there, so <laughs> I'm going to be a little bit more careful with them. <laughs> the good news is you didn't, you didn't blow anything up with it. Now, what I noticed earlier is that when we were sitting around in here, <laughs> everywhere I look, there are just random Porsche parts. <laughs> As we walk past the Scud, the R8, the Noble, all of your other projects, Freddie. And yeah, they're all, they're all like... Nice colour, by the way. Yeah, it's, uh, it's Technoviolet. Okay. Yeah. Purple's in at the minute. Purple is very in. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, two guys here working on purple cars. So over here, steering wheel. Yeah. No, I, I'm throwing this around because I feel it's like, probably twenty thousand dollars. Twenty thousand. This is going to be a lot. Yeah. So, <laughs> airbag is missing out of that. Yeah, that didn't go so well. And you found that there. Mm -hmm. uh, another thing as well with that airbag, actually, the wiring harness. Because they generate so much heat when these airbags when deploy, bang, yeah. it's melted yeah. the connections to the back of the airbag. So not only have I got to replace the airbag, which is expensive yeah. anyway, because you're getting an airbag, also the leather and the badge, which of course is going to have Porsche tax on. You're getting... <laughs> I've you've got repaired, to get this harness as well. You've repaired Porsches before. You know about the Porsche tax. Yeah, yeah. It's... Not, I mean... It, it's a Porsche tax or a Lamborghini. Actually, Lamborghini tax isn't too bad because you just find parts from other people. <laughs> yeah. I think the Porsche tax is you get Porsche tax and then you get an added GT tax as well. Yeah, so, um, How much was the tax on this? Yeah. Matt, Matt got me this as a gift for my oh, shop. Oh, really? Yeah, it came with nice. the instruction manual of this thing. Yeah, where is that manual? It's, it's a seat. It's literally a bucket with, with padding on it. That's it. And it, has and it like came a, with an instruction manual that says <laughs> it's so thick. Yeah. Like, do not sit on the edge. It's not a toy. Matt, welcome to the US. Liability and all of that. <laughs> <laughs> the instructions, and there are even like random parts under here, oh, yeah. and like airbags. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I've well and truly moved in. Yes, that's what I've done. <laughs> Absolutely. So, paint a sample, whoa! It is paint a sample. Has some, has some PPF on here, so yeah. this is worth something. A towing eye hook. Yep. This is um yeah this is oh, this I'm is priceless to somebody. Cover. Yeah, I'm gonna need a tow eye cover. I forgot about that. That's three thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> You'll find a way to make one. Yeah, it's fine. Can, yeah. You'll find a way to we'll make one. 3D print that. It's only for the GT3s, and they made it's it's a it's a one of one of one. Yeah. So so how long is this gonna take? Do you think? Like, are we? What's the plan? Um, three days. Yeah, three days. Yeah, three to four days. Three days in YouTube land. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think. Well, my plan. Come out, get every, strip everything apart, find out what I need, and then I was going to fly home, make sure everything was all ordered and ready, 
and then when it's here I'll fly back but it's not been as simple as that of course with not being able to get parts over here some parts I can get over in the UK so really there's I have no idea on time scale like I don't want to be here for so well actually I can't really complain I mean it's really nice, nice here, but I'm, just, I'm in Freddie's workshop I was going to say it depends how long the welcome is <laughs> not, yeah. not a problem here <laughs> yeah. this is the thing I don't it's know why Freddie just lets me be in here it's, just, it's <laughs> crazy fun. but no I, I it's so strange because I feel like it kind of like settled in already even though how far away from home we are like Florida is like so nice and the weather's nice working in shorts and a t-shirt and the car is 10 times better than in winter <laughs> yeah wrapping up and you've got freezing cold knuckles and you snap off that oh god it's oh. hit your knuckle oh yeah. that's a day ender right there yeah, yeah that's it's worth the flight just for that so <laughs> we don't know on time scale but hopefully pretty soon the sooner i can get it on the road the sooner i can drive it so we'll see well while we're here Let's uh, go for a drive. I want to get you behind the wheel of a British car out here. Yeah, <laughs> Just because it's odd. <laughs> okay, let's hopefully we're not rebuilding any other cars. But... Oh, please, please, please. <laughs> I've always wanted a Black Series. Yeah. Oh, thanks, guys. Let's go. <laughs> One GT Black Series at the ready. That, it, it looks unreal. Um, I, don't, I can't believe you let me drive this. Of course I am. <laughs> You've driven silly, powerful cars. Step in. Let's go. Let's take this out. Just go straight into the deep end and we'll work it out as we go. Wow, this is nice. Have you driven an AMG GT? Nope. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's, um... I can probably just pop that back in my pocket. <laughs> yeah. Keyless these days, I aren't they? I can't reach the pedals. Here we go. Yeah, slide that forward. Right. Start button just there. Okay, nice. Flat plane crank V8 in this thing. Um, is it twin turbo, this one? Yeah, 4 litre twin turbo V8. This is about 850 horsepower in this car. Uh, um, casual. 850? Yeah. How did they make it so fast? Um, 730 stock. This has an Opus tune and replacement exhaust system. 730 stock? So, my Aston has the V8 twin the turbo one. That's in engine. Yeah. So basically they made a whole new engine for this, for the GT Black Series. They took right. that. So this and is going to be ridiculous then, Oh, it's it? absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> wow. Yeah, let's go work it out. Leave the guys here for the moment. And <laughs> what did you do to your screen? Uh, yeah, America, road trip life. <laughs> uh, we're literally at about 15,000 miles now. Shipped it over wow, here. Wow, so you've done some... You just, oh my God, you've yeah. done some miles. <laughs> in these bucket seats as well? Yeah. How are you finding I that? I love them. I love these seats. They're super comfortable. Yeah, I mean... The, they're not as I've expensive say, as your GT3 ones. I've sat in the GT3 ones and they don't feel as comfortable as this. I feel no, like these are way better for long driving. That's it. Oh god, this is weird now. Right hand side, on the right hand side of the road. Yes. Okay, this as is. As like Germany strange. or France or something, but yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I've just been driving on the left for the past week. <laughs> on the left hand side of the car. Right, where am I going? It starts to sound better, doesn't it, when it you drive some gears? Really good. Got a whole load of pops and bangs and stuff. <laughs> so this is tuned then, that is definitely not so. no. it makes It makes some pops and crackles from stock, but obviously that many bangs and noises and things and the blow-off valve sound as well that you heard. Yeah, I mean, if you got like... Uh, it's the full opus kind of package, full opus package. Right. But the crazy thing is I did that when it was basically new. Yeah. This car has not skipped a beat. Nothing. Uh, yeah, and Mercs are, are pretty reliable. It's, In fact, my C63, the naturally aspirated yes. uh, 6.3, the engine's been reliable, other things not so much, but I guess that comes with the age. Um, the newer stuff is just next level. Yeah, like, so something like this is literally, like I say, apart from the windshield, which, windscreen, that's an American, yeah. isn't it? The windscreen, <laughs> windscreen. Um, which is something I can't fix out here because of the sensors on the left-hand oh, side. It's a different window, left-hand drive cars, uh, right-hand drive yeah, cars. Yeah, and I guess it's going to need calibration, that sort of stuff. Does it have like a... Um, that adaptive cruise control in this or not? This like, car actually doesn't. That's down in the front grille, but it's right. not. It's not on this Black Series. Um, the problem is that for grey import protection, they don't let you order the right-hand glass. Oh, I see. Um, so we have to make do without. This is where you should like just get a small taster for it. <laughs> Jesus! This <laughs> Oh wow! Wow, there's power like all the way up the road. Yes, it's serious, isn't this it? This car is sick. It's so it's like you drop it down some gears and you'll uh, get the whole uh, feel of the thing. Oh, this is unreal. But even when you have like rail tracks like this, it's not too uncomfortable either. Let's track cars go. It's really solid. <laughs> it's I like, love that. <laughs> wow. 
addictive, addictive power. Oh, and then there's a corner which is not so many no. up in America, which is <laughs> that was quite nice. The corners in Florida. No, there are some wonderful roads. Like as we said, if you go up to Tennessee with the GT3 when it's built, when it's done. Yeah. But this thing, it's oh, like it's on rails. So smooth. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> the gearbox is insanely fast. I don't know if you picked this up on camera, but when it's literally like instant. Yeah. Absolute instant. Like you want you want to change gear? That's fine. I'll change gear. <laughs> it's, it just does it. It just does what you want it to do. I think that this car could make you probably overconfident. Oh it does. Yeah. It makes you think you're an absolute god at the wheel. I already feel like that already. <laughs> like, I feel like right now I could just be sending it around any corner. Yeah. And I would be fine. <laughs> but yeah, I know that this is probably gonna like to get sideways at some point. It, oh yeah, well that's what you've got this for. Oh the I didn't ninth stage. That. You, do you know do you know about this? It's it's loads the, of different traction control yeah, settings. It's the AMG nine stage traction control. So when you enable it, you can choose literally nine different stages of traction. Because one isn't enough, like that is, uh, yeah. what stage do you like? Well, it depends what you're doing, right? <laughs> if you're on the racetrack, genuinely, you want it about five or six, so you still yeah. got a little bit of traction, if obviously you want to slide it around. It's actually quite funny, because one down from fully off is better for doing donuts and stuff normally. Right. Just because it's where the computers are controlling things, right? I see, I see. So like you were just saying, it makes you a hero. Yeah, 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 that's what it feels like. It feels like you can't crash yeah, that's why. <laughs> Please to don't say that. Please don't say that. I, I like this carbon fiber up here. How, how much traction control is on now? Uh, you're fully on at the moment. Fully on now. So yeah. second gear, high on the rev. Yeah. I'm gonna be brave. Oh gosh. <laughs> it didn't even spin. And no. that was how. That was insane. <laughs> Just great. Ridiculous power. Wow. <laughs> something like this feels wide. Oh, I could imagine. Like it makes a GT3 look pretty small and yeah. nimble. And the, the bonnet is huge. There's one thing I noticed straight away. Like, you yeah. see that huge vent, like, oh, it's a, a huge bonnet. So one of my favorite buttons when pulling up and parking, like with a curb in front, is the camera. I've got oh, a camera. you've got a camera straight yes. on the nose. Oh yeah, it makes sense. It so, makes sense. thankfully that helps us a little bit. <laughs> the downshift. <laughs> Imagine seeing this in your rear view. I mean, I'd be oh, scared. This, this car from in front is terrifying. <laughs> like the look, the look of the front of this car is really, really aggressive. And looking at the rear view, there's just a giant double stacked wing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got the cage and then the massive wing back there. That is huge. Oh, is there a Supra behind? Yes, the Supra. Oh, cool. Now we have friends. Mark V Supra. Car people around the world. That's it. He's probably like, oh my gosh, a black series. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> with a UK plate, what is going on? Well, people don't really notice that out here because lots of people illegally display their plates and do all sorts of other things. Oh, okay. So I tend to find people don't notice the plate. They see the steering wheel on, as they call it, the wrong oh, okay. side. And I remind, them, I remind them that it's on the it's right side. The right side, yeah, correct, <laughs> correct. <laughs> but then, yeah, then the conversation follows from there, like, what's going on? Yeah, I can imagine. But it will be, you're gonna have so much fun when your car is all done and up and running. Bring I cannot it in. wait to drive on these roads. People, at first I was upset that I would probably won't bring it back to the UK um, and think, oh, I'm never gonna have this, probably one of my best cars I own back in the UK. But now seeing the roads here, yeah, I'm not upset anymore. It's like, I, I know I'm gonna enjoy it a lot more here. Um, well, I can tell you from experience that if you wanted to bring the car from here back to the UK, you're going to be paying 32% tax on it. Yeah, it's not, yeah. it's not coming back. It's not coming back. It's just, it's a, a difficult kind of... But also, from uh, from what Freddie said as well, selling a car like the GC3 is a lot easier somewhere in the States where yeah. people have a lot of money to spend. If you brought that car from here back to England, you would be trying to sell a US left-hand drive accident repaired imported car in England. It's not going to happen. Yeah, yeah. It's not gonna no, happen. no, no, no. <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> maybe, maybe. I've got an idea. 
I've got an idea for you. I'm going to share this off camera okay. of what you can do about this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Wait and see. <laughs> this is where we press that button. I literally just thought I had another couple of feet at, and... Wait, if you pop it into drive, then it gives us the lines. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's I'm funny, close. isn't it? I was like, yeah, we'll keep going. <laughs> no, definitely not. Awesome. <laughs> wow. Nice one. Let's head back in. Back to this then. Oh. You guys have your work cut out. Well, you do. I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stand back and just watch you work. Yeah, this secondhand man is going to be my... My kind of assistant, I would say, with this one, or maybe a little bit more when it comes to taking that tub out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll get it done, we'll get it done, dude. It's actually quite fun that you've both, well, one completed, one in the works, done Murcielagos as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. that's kind of, it's inception, I'm saying, it's like a brother from another mother, I'm telling you, it's <laughs> like, the, it, that's what it feels like. I've met Freddie, and it is, you know when you just feel like you've met someone before? It's that kind of vibe. Yeah. That's how I get it. It's same, same so way, strange. Yeah, same thing here. It's it's interesting is like, you know, we're, we're 4,000 miles away, but like you still know what, you know, what a strip bolt feels like, you know? Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's, all, it's all the same experience and, you know, we like making cool cars, so. You speak you know. the same language. I think it's the, it's in the car world, everyone speaks the same language, but when you're working on cars, it's like an, another, it's like another step. Yeah. Like we, yeah. <laughs> we all experience the same thing. So. Absolutely. I absolutely love this. You guys, the YouTube inception of Adam's car stored here with Freddie, belonging to Matt. This is like the <laughs> coolest thing ever. Mm -hmm. So. I wish you the best of luck with it. I'm looking forward to seeing it. <laughs> Thanks, you're gonna need it. <laughs> Anxious, good to see you. Good to go out in the car as well. Thank you, man. Awesome. This is genuinely one of the most amazing crossovers ever. To see this car and to know what the plans are for this car and to hopefully see it completed at some point down the line as well. To know that Matt, bought a car this far away from home that we all know from Adam's videos, and it's now here in Freddie's workshop. Matt and Freddie actually met at the Petrol Hedonism events that of course I've been over to as well with Chiro and the team, but this is gonna take a lot of work. It all seems, from what I understand at least, manageable from what we've been through with all of this area earlier. And I think it would be so amazing to see Matt driving this car on the tail of the dragon at some point down the line too drive it, to enjoy it, and to use it, and to have some fun with it, because that's what it's all about. So big thanks to both of the guys for their time today, to show us around, and to be part of all of this craziness, because I think that's the best way to describe it. What a project, what an undertaking, and all of the best of luck to Matt with this as it heads towards completion. That's it for now though. Thank you very much for all of your support, guys. Do check out Matt's channel, and of course, Freddie's channel as well, if you'd like to see more of this as it makes its way through the project. But that's it for now, and I'll see you very soon. Cheers.